How do you clean a crystal chandelier? Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. So, you know, I was uh, on one of the Facebook groups uh, the other day, and um, this person had asked uh, about cleaning a chandelier. Uh, apparently the chandelier was uh, 10, uh, 12, 15 feet off the ground, and, uh, you know, it had a lot of uh, uh, crystals or, uh, you know, things hanging off it. They just weren't sure how the heck to clean it. Well, you know, I suggested they should just uh, clean it in ultrasonics. Um, and my very first company, we had a division called uh, Boise Ultrasonics, and uh, that's what we did is we did ultrasonic cleaning. And one of the things that we would do is that we would uh, clean chandeliers, uh, computers, uh, you know, just all kinds of items, blinds obviously, and then, uh, you know, artificial plants, but all kinds of things in ultrasonic cleaning. And, uh, but anyway, that's what I suggested, you know, that they just uh, clean it in ultrasonics, you know, because it was quite elaborate, uh, you know, it had a lot of, a lot of uh, individual pieces and things like that there. But, you know, that's the beauty about, if you do, or if you know anything about ultrasonic cleaning, uh, what it is, it's a tank. It's a stainless steel tank, and they come in various sizes. We had, I think, four different types of tanks, uh, four different sizes of tanks. We had some that were long and narrow uh, for cleaning blinds and things like that there. Uh, artificial trees. We had one that was a, a, a big square thing that could fit a, fit a wheelchair. Uh, you know, and that's what we used to clean with that. We used to clean wheelchairs and uh, computers. Uh, we did computers, uh, uh, a lot of uh, those. Uh, you know, you got to remember now, back in the day, this was back in the, the early 90s when we were doing this. You know, not a lot of people knew about how to, how to do this type of cleaning. But, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a great way to clean because when you have items like, like a chandelier like that, uh, there's really nothing to it. Um, you know, all you have to do is you just, you know, remove the chandelier. Not a big deal, you know. Uh, well, not a big deal if you know how to do it. Um, you know, because a lot of people get intimidated. Well, you're, you're dealing with power, this, that, and the other. And people also get intimidated by, by the object itself. But, you know... Uh, if you once you set that aside and uh, you realize just how easy some of this stuff is, then uh, you would remove the chandelier, uh, take it down uh, down on the ground to your ultrasonic tank, turn on your tank, which you can do mobily. So you know, in uh, in some cases, that's what we did was that we'd move, take our tank on site and and clean items. So you'd bring it down, put it in your tank, and uh, split, flip the switch on, and the ozone generator would do its thing. You know, it'd create all these millions of little air bubbles that would implode on the object, and that's how it would clean it. Uh, very cool. You know, it's the same thing. Now, if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, many of you have jewelry, and uh, these small jewelry cleaners is an ultrasonic machine. So you, you often will take your ring and you'll put it into this little ultrasonic machine, turn it on, and it will clean your ring. Well, same thing, but this, this here is on a much bigger scale. So that's the beauty about ultrasonic cleaning. Um, like I say, you know, we cleaned, oh gosh, uh, uh, we started with mini blinds. That's how we actually got into that business. Uh, and we bought our uh, ultrasonic uh, tank from Marantz Ultrasonics, uh, which are, they're still in business. They do a great job. Uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic company. But that's what we did. And uh, uh, we started with blinds. And then uh, we eventually uh, would go to some of their classes. Uh, we'd go to Las Vegas and, uh, and uh, took some classes on fire sonics because we did fire restoration. And uh, that's where we learned about, uh, you know, how to displace water and do a lot of really cool things so you can clean electronics. Um, and it was, you know, when, you, when I first saw it, I just thought, come on, you know, uh, this can't be. But uh, it, it's true, it works. That's why we can take a computer and sum, submerge this computer in water and be able to clean this thing, is because we, we displace the water and uh, so on and so forth. But anyway, uh, that was my recommendation to them, is to, to use an ultrasonics to clean, this, to clean the chandelier. Sure, you could get a lift, you go up there, and then you could clean it all by hand, but you know, it, it's got all these intricate parts. You know, the little crystals and things, sure, you could, you could wear white gloves, uh, and you could wipe off all these things. Uh, you could use glass cleaner, uh, you know, put it on the gloves and clean these items, but uh, still that would take a lot of time, uh, a lot of time uh, to do that. And yeah, it's not going to do that good a job, really. Sure, the crystals may look clean, but the nooks and crannies and stuff of the, of the, uh, 
uh, of the chandelier are still going to be dirty. So anyway, um, so what I'm what I'm saying here is that when you have an item like a chandelier or something that may be difficult to clean, just stop and think about what would be the easiest method to clean it. Now you know it's, uh, it's, it goes back to the old saying, you know, um, you know, work work uh, smart, not hard. So. And, you know, uh, if you don't have an ultrasonic machine, well, you know, do a search in your area to find somebody that maybe does uh, fire restoration because they generally will have an ultrasonic machine because a lot of fire restoration companies, that's what they use is ultrasonics to clean uh, smoke damaged items and so on and so forth. So uh, search in your area and you might find somebody. So, you know, then go talk to them and, and see what kind of a price you can put together on cleaning various items. Maybe you can start bringing them blinds you know, and other types of items, you know, then, then just mark it up a small percent uh, to the homeowner or the, or the, or the facility owner. Uh, but, you know, always think outside the box. You know, it's not all about uh, spraying and wiping and, and doing things like that there. Uh, especially on some kind of an item like that there, you know, it's uh, uh, when you got some of these intricate items that are just have nooks and crannies and this, that, and the other and really difficult to clean, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to spray it and scrub it with a toothbrush and wipe it with your hands and do all this other stuff. Uh, just the time alone would be, would be crazy, uh, let alone it's not going to really do that good a job to where if you have some other types of cleaning uh, methods, such as ultrasonics, you'll be amazed on how well a job it, it does. And you have to remember now there's all types of uh, uh, ultrasonic generators. You know, the, you have uh, some that are are more heavy duty to that, you know, for cleaning guns and things like this here. Uh, you know, and then you have others such as the one that I told you about that will clean jewelry, you know. Uh, so, you know, that's the whole thing is that, uh, sure, you're not going to use some kind of an ultrasonic uh, generator that's not, that shouldn't be, uh, uh, that you wouldn't use on a chandelier or a delicate item. So that's the key there. But that's why if you partner up with somebody that has an ultrasonic machine, uh, they should know all this stuff. They should be able to tell you if they can clean those items in their tanks or not. But anyway, uh, something to think about. You know, additional income, uh, especially for you homeowners. I mean, my gosh, you know, people have blinds. they got artificial trees, you know, and uh, knickknacks. You know, uh, <laughs> so many times we've come across when we're cleaning residential homes that th these people would have all these knickknacks and, you know, some of them uh, were getting a little, uh, a little dirty. Uh, we did uh, plenty of fire restorations too to where that's what we would do is we just take the knickknacks and put them in our ultrasonic tank and run them for 30, 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, take them out and they look like they're brand new. It's just amazing. But anyway, think outside the box. Uh, ultrasonic uh, cleaning is really cool. Uh, and like I say, you know, uh, people may think you're crazy when you're going to tell them you're going to clean a computer. Um, you know, but uh, they do get uh, dirty, they get built up, they, uh, they heat uh, the fans and everything get built up with dust uh, because it's drawn in all that dust and you know that's what causes uh, some of the problems uh, you know for your computer. Uh, you know a lot of those things have changed you know too but you know because you got different uh, different uh, uh, computers now. These are back when you had the towers and things like that there that were drawn in uh, a lot of contaminants on the floor and so on and so forth. But anyway think outside the box you know, there's money to be made out there, and next time you have a tough item such as a chandelier or something, well, think about cleaning it with ultrasonics. Well, hopefully this helps. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and uh, click the like button, uh, click the share button, and you know, share it with somebody else. Share the share the share the knowledge. And uh, again, you know, if uh, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, we've got hundreds of uh, helpful uh, videos for cleaning business owners, and uh, we'll see you next time.